Okay, now I told you about the different types of bacteria, cocci, bacillus, spirillum and vibrio, vibrellum. Four different types are there. Cocci, bacilli, spirillum and vibrellum. And uh, now here, so I told you these are, these are the kind of bacteria which were, I mean, they were microscopic in nature. And now, uh, when we talk about this bacteria, uh, it is noticed that one of the biggest bacteria, I mean, in size, I am talking about the size, the, the biggest bacteria is nothing but called as Thio Margarita Namibiensis. Thio Margarita Namibiensis. Now, this kind of bacteria is of 0.75 millimeter. When compared to the normal bacteria, this bacteria is of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, base of more in, in, in size. I mean, it's, it's bigger than the normal bacteria. And now, this bacteria is the biggest bacteria. Thio Margarita Namibiensis is the biggest bacteria. It was found found out by uh, Haid and Shells in the year 1997, 1997. Haid and Shells in the year 1977, 1997, 1997, Haid and Shells is a person who has discovered, who has found out this bacteria in the coastal waters of Namibia. So, Namibia is a place, Nam, Nam, uh, Namibia is a place where is uh, this biggest bacteria, I mean, was found, was found out by Haid and Shells and he has given the statement that it's of 0.75 millimeter in I mean, in size when compared to the normal bacterium and this is biggest bacteria which can be seen through our naked eyes. So, means you can use the word unaided eye also without microscope we can see this bacteria Thio Margarita Namibiense. So, when you write the binomial name you should write the species name with a script letter. Now, this, when the species will always start with a script letter, you might have studied in the lower classes and the genus name will always start with a capital letter. So, capital letter of the genus and the first letter of the I mean, species will start with a script letter. So, capital letter and script letter, this were the I mean, uh, rules for the binomial nomenclature, binomial name. So, the binomial, nomen, binomial name of the bacteria, the largest bacteria is Thio Margarita Namibiensis. So, it has a genus and it has a species name also. So, now this is about the bacteria. So, bacteria were found in air, they were found in soil, they were found in the skin of person and it can also be seen in the intestine. It is, it is helpful for the digestion process in human beings. So, this is about the bacteria and bacteria are useful and some of the bacteria are, I mean, uh, they, they, were, they cause diseases, etc. So, harmful and harmless bacteria are also there. Now, we will see about the next one, we will see about the fungi. Before that, we have virus. So, now virus, we will talk about the virus. I mean, uh, now viruses are also microscopic in nature. Now, this virus cannot prepare, they cannot prepare their own food. Some of the bacteria uh, are autotrophs, some of the bacteria are autotrophs and some of the bacteria are heterotrophs. So, uh, when we talk about the bacteria, the mode of nutrition when we talk autotrophic, they can prepare their own food. Some of the bacteria can prepare their own food. But I mean, most probably they were, they were nothing but they were, they comes under heterotrophs only. Some, only some were, some were autotrophs. And now, so when we talk about this virus, these are, I mean, the virus is also a microscopic organism and now they causes diseases, they causes diseases and now they are responsible for uh, the diseases and now they are also microscopic organisms and now one of the uh, one of the dreadful virus is nothing but called as HIV virus human immunodeficiency virus human immunodeficiency virus now this virus causes AIDS in persons So, it is a dreadful disease, AIDS is a dreadful disease which is, which will be uh, by means of the human immunodeficiency virus. Now, it is a kind of virus, 
is a kind of virus which causes dreadful diseases in human beings. Now, um, I mean, this is also a kind of virus called as tobacco mosaic virus, TMV virus. Now, viruses affect plant parts, human beings, animals, etc. I mean, uh, they cause more, I mean, all, all the viruses were responsible for the diseases. And now, an important, uh, important point, I mean, on viruses, they may act as non-living component and also they may act as a living component it is an interesting factor about the viruses if the virus live inside the living living body it acts as a living organism if the virus attach or if it is seen uh, over if, if it is living on the non-living matters they act as a non-living organism so they have two nature one is the living nature and the other one is non-living nature now viruses are responsible i mean uh, for the common the, they are the causality agents of the diseases i told you and now they may spread by air they may spread i mean they, they the viruses will spread through I mean, maximum by the virus cause diseases it spread the disease through air and now uh, i mean uh, the viruses have a crystallized they have a crystallized they have crystallized protein in the body now an important factor which is present in the uh, in the virus is nothing but protein they have protein inside the body now viruses are responsible for the diseases now we'll see i mean we'll see the next microorganism the next group of organism which is nothing but called as fungi now fungi we'll see about fungi now this is human immunodeficiency virus uh, I told you about this human immunodeficiency virus is responsible for the cause of AIDS in persons. And I will see about the next, uh, next pick, nothing but fungi, about fungi. Now, fungi can be a unicellular organism, I mean fungi is in the nature of unicellular and some of the, some of the fungi are multicellular. And now, so the unicellular fungi can be seen only through the microscope and uh, when we talk about the fungi i told you about they are of unicellular and also multicellular now you can absorb the fungi i mean in the i mean in the bread slime I mean, bread peas in the bread slice you can absorb the fungi and now fungi uh, i mean uh, they reproduce by means of spores Fungi reproduce by means of force. They are the heterotrophs. They cannot prepare their food. They depend upon other source for the food. And now the spores, I mean I told you about the spores, they produce, they produce, a genera they, they, they enrich the generation, they bring up the generation only by means of producing spores. And now the lower forms I told, the lower forms of fungi can be seen through microscope but the wild form of fungi is nothing but the wild form of fungi is nothing but mushrooms mushrooms are good examples for uh, fungi okay now this fungi can be seen in the rotten places where there is damp uh, i mean decomposed materials where there is little moisture this is the place where the fungi grows and now uh, I mean we can see mushrooms nearby them I mean near near I mean we can see the mushrooms in the logs in the moisture logs of woods you can see in the logs of wood you can absorb I mean uh, during the rainy season and you can see mushrooms growing on the logs of wood which which is nothing but they will have a little wherever they see little moisture the fungi will grow in that place now micros I mean if you talk about fungi some are microscopic and mushroom is a is a, I mean mushroom uh, we can see the mushroom through our naked eyes so this is about fungi and I will see the next and we'll see the different types of fungi also see uh, aspergillus pencilium aspergillus pencilium is also some of the examples of fungi aspergillus pencilium etc some of the fungi are useful in the process of making antibiotics they are they are uh, they are used in the form of antibiotics and now uh, we'll see about we'll see about 
protozoans. Now fungi is over, we will see about protozoans. Now protozoa, now these are the pure forms of heterotrophs, protozoa, protozoans. Now here we will go for the protozoans, see the pic here. So amoeba is a good example for protozoans, some of the, some of the protozoans will live uh, and some of the protozoans are found in the soil and some of the protozoans are found in the water. And now the, I mean the habitat, if you talk about the habitat where it lives, habitat, so such kind, I mean habit, habitat. Now uh, we, I mean, we can split the word, this habitat, what is the habitat? So I mean uh, amoeba, amoeba where it locates, habitat, where this amoeba can be found in, found in. it can be seen, it can be seen in the water. And now, when you talk about other other forms of protozoa, I mean uh, uh, paramecium, uh, plasmodium, etc. I mean some I mean uh, some of the protozoans have the habitat of living in the water, and some of the I mean, protozoans have the habitat of living in the soil. So para, I mean you can see paramecium over here, right? And now this is also an example for protozoa. And next, plasmodium, para, I mean uh, amoeba, plasmodium. Uh, paramecium you can see in the I mean so we, uh, these things comes under the I mean uh, the, the, the group nothing but protozoa. So protozoans are mostly they are present on the soil and um, I mean some forms are we can see in the water and now we will see about the next type of uh, microorganism which is nothing but called as microarthropod, orthopod, microarthropod, microarthropods. Now uh, here microarthropods. Now this, I mean, this is uh, they they won't. I um, mean, they they are not like bacteria. And this this kind of organism they comes under the category invertebrates. Now here in the category invertebrates, we can include. They have segmented bodies. They have segments. They have different segments in the body. And so they comes under the category invertebrates. They do not have, they don't have spinal cord. And now, so they have uh, segments in the body. So most of the organism can be seen in the skin parts, in the eyelids, eyelashes, in the eyelashes, etc. And some of the some of the organisms can be seen. Uh, some of the organisms can be seen in the in the rocks, I mean in the leaves, and some of the organisms can be seen in the beddings, ornamental plants. Some of the organisms can be seen in the ornamental plants. Some of the organisms can be seen in the in the I mean uh, in the I mean dry leaves, etc. And most of the protozoans uh, they live in the skin eyelids, eyelashes, etc. And now uh, what is the importance of this uh, arthropod is, this arthropods, uh, they, um, they, they decompose the soil, they decompose the soil, they add fertility to the soil, they add fertility to the soil and, uh, and this, these arthropods are of use and also at the same time they may ca they they cause diseases in human beings. So I mean they add fertility soil to the soil. They were seen more on the soil. They they were found more on the soil and also uh, they add they decompose the material and uh, they help uh, the soil to be fertile. So fertility is also added by means of the arth the uh, microarthropods. So some of the examples were given here, tick mites, etc. And uh, the important disease which is by means of the arthropods is nothing but scabies. Scabies disease is caused by uh, the, my, the arthropod. I mean uh, it gives itching sensation, itch, itching, it's a kind of itching disease. Now the, uh, the tick mites, um, the tick mites, etc. which whatever comes under the protozoan, they have a segmented body. And now these were some of the examples of uh, arthropods. You can have a quick glance over. Arthropods. 
before PIX. Okay. Now, uh, you can see some of the protozoan members here, uh, I mean tick mites, Daphnia, next week. Daphnia, tick mites, etc., were some of the common examples for protozoans. Okay. 